Today we're going to be recording drums at Tile Yard Studios. We're going to give you a technical insight into how the pros capture their drums and what they do to make them sound great in a track. We're working today with Nikolai Bierre. You shouldn't be afraid of experimenting and, and sometimes you just have to do it the wrong way because that's the way it sounds best. We've also hooked up with producer and DJ of the next men, Brad Ellis. The rhythm track is, is, is in my productions, is always the basis of the song and without that you're, you're pretty screwed. Nick and Brad have been long-term fans of the Focusrite sound in their recordings. We're using the Focusrite 428, an Octopre Mark II Dynamic, and there are some handy tips on compression techniques and mic placement. Our drummer for today is live musician and drum student Luis Arango Abello. The first thing to do is set up the kit and the microphones. So let's have a look. It's a 68 kind of Ludwig kit and so if, you, good, yeah? Yeah, if you hit it really hard, it kind of starts losing the, the low end. You get a lot of clap. Yeah. clap. A lot of, the, a lot of the, the people like Clyde Stolfield, James Rounds, drummer, you know, people like Steve Gadd. Yeah. They play quiet. They play super soft. I mean, they can play loud, but yeah, generally yeah, yeah. They, they play really quietly and then they have, you know, the, the kind of some of the fattest sounding yeah. drums. Yeah. Today we're using a vintage Ludwig 68 kit with the Brady snare and Sabian cymbals in a room that Nikolai knows sounds great, with carefully placed acoustic treatment. So let's have a look at the microphones Brad and Nikolai use to get the best sound. Firstly, the kick drum has two microphones. Inside the skin is an AKG D112, which adds a click and weight to the recording. On the outside of the kick near the skin is a secret weapon. This is a rewired subwoofer speaker, homemade by Nikolai by recycling an old hi-fi speaker. This adds a low-end sub flavour to the kick recording. On the snare and both toms are sure SM57s, placed carefully so as not to get too much in the way of the drummer. Underneath the snare is an AKG C451, which captures the high-end signal of the Brady snares. The overheads comprise of a stereo pair of Josephson C42s, approximately one metre apart. Also, Brad has requested a mono overhead, this is an AKG C414. This supplies a more direct and punchy overhead signal. On the hats we're using a Peluso CEMC6 with a super cardioid capsule to pick up as much of the hats and as little of the snare as possible. This is pointed diagonally away from the snare. Nikolai and Brad use two ambient microphones. A Peluso P12 approximately four feet away from the kick drum followed by a Sontronics Apollo, roughly eight feet away from the kick. They're keen to point out a handy trick to add body to the drum recordings by using these ambient mics. More on this later. Nikolai tests the input signals of the kit while Lewis plays through the track to ensure nothing is clipping on the way in. And he adds subtle compression to the kick and snare mics with the Octopre Mark II Dynamic. All right, I think we, uh, we're kind of ready to, to do a take. One take, yeah. Brad gives Lewis some helpful advice on how to get the best out of his performance. And also focus on where you're hitting the snare drum. It's really important that you, focus, that you, you hone in on that that spot. You found it earlier on when you were playing with the choir, so you found it, I guess yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's real kind of dead centre, really, yeah. I guess. Just dead centre on the drum. Loud, playing a bit too loud. I'm uh, playing a bit too loud, yeah? yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And maybe turn the level down of the song. The level down, it was whacked up really loud, so. Yeah, that's probably right. Lewis gives an excellent few takes of the track and they begin listening to the recordings. Nikolai and Brad now give us another extremely useful tip on producing the drum sound to make it bigger and more present. By compressing these two ambient mic channels heavily with the Octopre Mark II Dynamic and adding them gently to the rest of the drum channels in the mix, they transform the drum recording from being somewhat flat to something punchy and exciting. When mixed with the electronic track, it adds a heavier element to the session. To recap on the techniques we've learned today, a super cardioid mic capsule can help you isolate hats to minimise bleed from other drums. Two ambient room mics at different distances 
offer you more option to add in the acoustics of the room later. A rewired subwoofer adds a low subby tone to the kick. A mono overhead microphone can give you a more direct and punchy result. A reliable and transparent preamp will not colour the signal and compromise the session. By heavily compressing the ambient mics with the Octopre Mark II and adding optional distortion, you can add more weight to the recording. Adding compression to the kick and snare on the way in results in a healthy and warm tone. Love it, it's gone really well. Um, I think we've got a great sound, so I'm looking forward to chopping the drums up and making them sound good later.